And um, yeah, I want to talk with you about today about the creation of new digital services in our world leading tourism company. And um, yeah, so what did we achieve with W2 together in the past 12 to 18 months? So um, looking into it, just uh, to give you some more words about me. So um, yeah, I'm working in tourism for over 15 years now. I'm um, yeah, some sometimes called an IT all-rounder because I have uh, some experiences um, with yeah, system engineering, development, on, uh, analyst and architect as well. So I have uh, multiple roles in my career so far, but everything comes together in creating integration of microservices platforms. So um, I built already once for two operators. So um, for our internal companies, um, which are bringing people to holidays or vacations. I built um, a microservice platform already for our airline sector. So for our five airlines we have in in place. And um, yeah, I'm like to inspire you and others about uh, microservice architecture and open API platforms. So that's what I'm always looking for and always uh, see how we can create, um, yeah, how we can create uh, values for our services or for our uh, customers by creating those architectures. And as you mentioned, as head of digital platform, I'm responsible for um, the entire software application stack. Uh, so the architecture for over 50 hotels uh, within our uh, organization. And uh, just give to you a short overview about the organization and uh, what the company is about, because I think not uh, many of you are familiar with um, with two years at all, but we are the world's leading number one tourism group. In uh, 2019, we uh, bring up, or we brought over 20 million customers to the vacation destinations. Uh, we are operating 400 hotels across the globe. Uh, we own 18 cruise ships. Um, we have about 1,600 travel shops in Europe only, and also over 70,000 people are working uh, under this umbrella of TUI. Yeah, so underlying EBITDA is around 900 million or even 18.9 billion uh, turnover in the last year. So um, listen to uh, our customers' needs is what uh, we're always looking for. So, um, as mentioned, we have 400 hotels or even 50 hotels we are looking at. And um, this is one hotel um, I picked out here. Um, it's our new club in uh, in Crete. Uh, it's a little island in, uh, in the Ionic Mere uh, or Sea. And um, it's looking very small, but um, if you think about this uh, little resort we have here can have always about three uh, square kilometers. So for example, you can take from the up right corner to the left beach side, you can take over 20 minutes walk time to get there. So um, one of our new digital service is select your room. 18 months ago, we started um, developing the service and we asked ourselves um, which facility um, would you like to use most when you are on a resort or in a hotel? Um, should it be mostly quiet or would you be in a party area of the resort? Would you be close to the beach or near to the pool? And um, would you like to have even more morning sun or evening sun? Typically, if you book a room or book um, your vacation and your stay in a hotel, you typically book a room category like a double room or a twin room, like a seafront view or um, a room with uh, two bed apartments and so on. But uh, with this service, with this thing, we, we thought about, okay, giving our people or our guests the opportunity to book a specific room number within their book category. So for example, we give our guests the opportunity to book um, room number four or four um, for their vacation. And um, we give them the uh, live um, availability of the of the service or of the of the room, so they can um, 
really see which rooms are available during their time when they want to, to stay um, in our resorts. But um, we have to overcome our internal challenges to get quick responses and feedback cycle times with our customers. So uh, having 400 hotels or even looking into the hotel operations, um, there are 100 different property management systems, uh, mostly on premise. So um, the main challenge was to see, okay, how can we integrate a lot of different systems, a lot of different um, technologies, a lot of different connections um, to one platform, or how can we connect and get this available for our customers? Most likely, um, the, the systems are old, and we have a de facto standard it called HDNG, but it's not only supported by all systems. So we also have to see um, how we can transform and overcome these, um, yeah, this data mess at the end. And um, after ideation phase, so after thinking about we want to like, uh, create a new service, we got the go and we said, uh, or we got the goal to say, okay, within six months, we want to go live with the first property. So um, we need to be fast, we need to be quick uh, in case of implementation, we need expert for it and so on and so forth. But um, there was, um, yeah, another goal for us. So we should keep the running costs as low as possible. We should not engage any new employees or we should uh, have scalable costs for infrastructure because um, this service was more like a bed. So we saw the need by the customers, but we wasn't sure enough if it's really a good um, idea to create this. So therefore we would like to keep the, the running costs as low as possible and see how the adaption by the customers uh, would go. And um, then we had the question, so which business platform should we use? As mentioned earlier, we do have business platforms for integration and, um, and microservices across our company, um, but Within special area, within hotels and resorts, a division of TUI, we don't have a platform available. So therefore, um, we thought about having a new platform uh, growing. Um, it's more like a greenfield approach, but we should support the group strategy with API and cloud first, open source, and reuse our DevOps capabilities we have across the group. And then it comes where it goes now. Um, we looked into um, the WSN2 uh, SO2 integrator platform or the enterprise integrator platform. And we were convinced by this platform, by the fast pass of development by low code microservices. So we were very convinced about uh, the capabilities of the platform, especially in looking into people uh, capabilities. So, um, with the mess of uh, services we do have, with the mess of integration and the complex of integration we do have, we have to build business processes within our enterprise integrated platform as well. Not only just um, integrated endpoints and little microservices, we do have complex processes as well to build up and to develop. Um, another um, advantage by WSO2 was uh, the service or the managed services. So um, we got uh, the WSO2 managed service, um, which is a highly skilled managed cloud team, uh, which can apply the best practices of configurations to our architecture. So honestly, we have a just rare or basic uh, WSO2 architecture in place. It's not fancy or it's not highly complex, but um, with this managed service, we don't have any worries or don't have any thought about failure, security or regular updates. We also need to, don't need to take any people in account to manage this platform because everything is managed by this team from WSO2. A third one, third advantage was uh, the cloud adoption. So you can imagine that TUI is um, or has a a strong relationship with AWS, so two, uh, with AWS, for example. So uh, we already have our own cloud, our own uh, VPCs and DevOps platforms, but um, 
it was able for WSO2 to implement their um, enterprise integrator into our cloud. So we, we provide the uh, VPC and everything else is done by the managed service and integrator team. So that's uh, for sure another advantage. And the fourth one is um, that we had um, a strong, or we still have a strong development partner, which is experienced is, uh, experience in, um, in microservices integrator and as well as in uh, WSO2. This shortened our development times and we could also focus on the architecture as well. So in this case, greetings to our guy, uh, teams from Polarizing, which are our um, development partner in here. And now um, I want to show you how um, the product looked like because um, we developed this all within six months for uh, the first property, so for the first resort. And um, I'm now showing you how is it running. Um, so in this first window, so we created a, a video for our customers if they have any questions, and this is the replay of this video. Um, so in the first uh, window or first screen, um, sorry for being in German in this case, but it's uh, the only available video I've found so far. Um, but you can see um, a screen where the customer have to log in and where they authenticate. Um, so coming from the process, from the customer process, typically the customer book their stay on our website, for example. So um, they are um, going to Dewey.com or even to a specific hotel page. They are booked their uh, room, their stay, and saying, okay, from a specific time frame, I want to have a double room, for example. And then right after, they're able to collect their um, uh, select your, their room, so it's uh, their wish room. It's uh, the translation of the first, uh, yeah, of Wunschzimmer in this case. And we have to identify the customer. So therefore, we get uh, five pillars from them. We need a reservation number. We need the club or the resort where they're traveling to. We need uh, the last name, and this is uh, all going into uh, one of our major um, micros or API um, gateways our proxies. So we have a lookup um, API in place. So where we find out um, this reservation, um, the internal numbers and so on. So uh, got the um, yeah, connection to um, the operating systems. So they start uh, entering all the data. And if they press the button, um, it starts the process. So in this case, we already fetched the data from the operating system in a live um, environment. We don't do any caching in this case, but um, we already have here um, a call to our APIs, a call to several microservices because we have to um, translate the external reservation number with internal reservation numbers. Um, we also do um, checks uh, for the names, for example, because typically customers don't write the names correct, or even um, there are mistakes uh, or misspellings in this case. So uh, we do as well um, some comparisons of the names, of name lengths, of uh, spellings and so on and so forth in there. And um, yeah, so fetch the data and represent this or resend this to the platform. And you'll see a card uh, in the background, uh, which is um, here, the map, uh, digital map of the um, of the resort with all points of interest. And um, you can see in this case, um, little gray blocks, for example, which are um, yeah, individual hotel rooms uh, in this resort. And additionally, we gave our customer uh, the opportunity to filter uh, more on their uh, specific requirements. For example, we asked them, would you like to have a morning sun, evening sun? Would you be on the pool side? Would you have to um, have a, a sea view, for example? So give them more uh, opportunities to filter um, the result lists and all the information um, from 
for this filter are coming through our microservice platform. So uh, we fetch this data uh, from our internal database and we can provide all this dynamically to the front end to say, okay, which are the possible, um, which are the possible um, rooms they can choose for. So starting from beginning, um, you can see here now we fetch a pool side and now it's a drill down into it. We're going to different uh, levels. So the resorts do have different levels and then we are, you see uh, dynamically changes. Now the customer picked room number 1612 and uh, gets all the details in there. And then he's uh, confirming his reservation. Um, it's put everything together. And after that, um, he booked his preferred room during his stay. Uh, so in this case, room number 1619. So the result is uh, great for our customers. The adoption is quite high. So uh, within the last 12 months, uh, despite the COVID-19 pandemic, um, over 20, uh, 23,000 nights uh, we already generate, uh, generated through this uh, services. We have up to 500 daily users and then a conversion rate on up to 15% of the service. And we plan to further roll out this uh, to our whole portfolio in the next months um, so that we gather more hotels and more customers to room or uh, choose their specific room during this day. From a platform perspective, from a technical perspective, yeah, we created at least two new APIs um, for the registration or authentication as well as for um, select your room with a lot of uh, microservices underneath it to um, yeah, combine the complexity uh, of the mesh of systems or mess of systems. Um, as mentioned, we have a, yeah, a simple and basic WSO2 architecture. Um, but it's running very, very good um, by our managed service team. So uh, we have, within the last 12 months, we don't had any downtime of the environment, which is pretty awesome. Um, no service interruption at all, even if uh, AWS is uh, not running in, uh, in a data center um, due to failover and cluster architecture, everything was running fine. Um, we have our AWS inter uh, account integrated with GitHub, Puppet, and Epigee. Um, and yeah, so this is all working for a automated and a CI platform or CI CD platform. So everything runs very smooth from our perspective. And um, yeah, as already mentioned, as COVID-19 has emerged, um, the behavior um, of the customers uh, changed. So. We created one digital service um, as an so-called additional service uh, to generate a bit more uh, revenue for our companies and value for our customers. Uh, so during COVID-19 uh, rising, the customers said, okay, we want to have fewer contacts uh, in the hotel. We want to do uh, holidays and vacations, but we want to have fewer contacts and would, uh, for example, would like to check in in advance. So um, you may be familiar with online check-ins uh, in uh, airlines, where is it uh, typically, uh, typically in place. In hotels, uh, especially in uh, leisure hotelry, it's not so familiar because people are going once or twice on, on, on vacation a year. So um, often it's not their, their business trip and therefore, uh, resorts and so on don't provide those uh, capabilities. But uh, in this case, we wanted to do this. So, um, the, or the guests um, came to us with these, um, yeah, with these feature requests. They want to have an online check-in as well. Um, we said, okay, uh, our, we want to, um, yeah, reduce the risk of our uh, for our employees as well to uh, yeah risk of an infection and have less effort um, but during the business requirement fine, uh, phase we uh, found out that it's very complicated um, and 
there are very dynamic requirements for this business process due to different legal requirements. Just to give you an example, um, we have resorts all over the world. So for example, not only in, uh, in Europe, in the Mediterranean Sea, but also in, uh, in Vietnam, for example, or in Thailand, um, as well as uh, on the Maldives, um, we have some in Zanzibar and so on. So um, if you want to go, uh, want to, go to uh, Vietnam, for example, um, you have to provide your uh, job title. Um, but if you're coming, so as an European, you have to provide your job title. Um, but if you come uh, to uh, Vietnam and you're coming out of China because uh, you have Chinese nationality, you not only need to provide your job title, but you need to provide as well some um, some tax information, for example, or if you go to Italy and coming from Germany, you don't need to, you ju just need to provide your identity card, not your passport number. But if you are an Italian guy going to it Italy in, in vacation, you need as well to provide your tax numbers, your uh, IDs, um, some family members, and so on and so forth. So it's a very complex and dynamic situation. Um, so it depends really during um, entering those information um, to see, okay, which fields are then mandatory and which fields are just obligation. And um, this made it quite complex. And uh, at the end, we had just finally a, a short lead time and development time because COVID-19 raised in March 19 and we wanted to have, uh, or we saw um, a recovering of uh, vacation holidays in uh, in the summer time, and then we saw okay people want to have less contact times in in the hotels, and therefore, yeah, the request uh, was placed at us, and we started developing. So, in this case, we took only two and a half months between requirement gathering and first release. Um, we established several microservices uh, and system adapters, but. Um, we could reuse uh, a lot of uh, what we had before. So we had, for example, the authentication process is nearly the same for the customer and we could reuse it. And um, therefore we had less time. We also could reuse types of uh, the system adapters to uh, the operating systems. And um, yeah, supported by our reliable architecture platform and uh, servers uh, from WSO2, could fully concentrate um, on developing this new service for our customer. And uh, we don't have too much time spending on, um, yeah, the, on the operation of the platform on uh, security updates or whatever. So um, altogether, um, yeah, very happy about the relationship with WSO2, with, uh, with their team, with their, uh, with their platform, with the product itself. Uh, because we can concentrate on going forward and deliver values for our customers. And um, yeah, as well, happy with our uh, development partner with Polarizing in this case, um, because they are very good in uh, developing and supporting us uh, with the architecture and how to create the best microservices for our uh, needs. Yeah, and this is how we create new digital services uh, in yeah, in TUI and especially in hotels and resorts. And um, if you have any uh, recommendation which digital service you would like to have uh, on your next vacation, I'm open uh, and I would uh, strongly recommend you to, to provide me those information. Uh, I'm very happy to do so.